Is that hate carried in the stole? Absolutely. It, the hate, the sorrow, the anguish, pity. Oh, the murderous feelings, yes, carried in the stole. In the 1970s, a man named Kerry Walton returned to his childhood home in Wagga Wagga, Australia to attend his grandmother's funeral. While exploring an abandoned house, he discovered an old, decrepit doll under the floorboards. Intrigued by its eerie appearance, Kerry decided to take the doll home. Little did he know that this decision would change his life forever. The doll, later named Letta, short for Letta Me Out, is believed to be over 200 years old and of Eastern European origin. The origin of the name Letta the doll came about when he was transporting it to his new home. When he put the doll in the trunk of his car to drive home, he heard movement and a scream, Letta Me Out! The doll was the only thing in the trunk. Crafted by a Romanian gypsy, Letta was made to house the spirit of a drowned boy. It has real human hair, and underneath the scalp is something that resembles the human brain. Almost immediately after bringing the doll home, Carrie and his family began to experience strange occurrences. The twist of the story is that, contrary to what we may believe, Walton's life has significantly improved since finding the doll. His business was booming, and his luck seemed to change overall. Of course, every good thing has its price. There are some quirks that surround the strange doll. Apparently, every time Letta is taken outside, it will start raining. Objects would move on their own, and unexplainable sounds would echo through their home at night. Letta's eyes seemed to follow people around the room, and visitors often felt an overwhelming sense of unease in its presence. Pets would react violently to the doll, barking and hissing at it as if sensing something unseen. Even more unsettling, the doll's expression would change and it would seem to move slightly when no one was looking. Kerry has taken Letta to various psychics and mediums, all of whom have confirmed the presence of a spirit within the doll. They've also warned that the spirit is restless and angry. Despite these warnings, Kerry has kept Letta, saying that parting with the doll feels impossible, as if it has a hold over him. Letta remains one of the most enigmatic and chilling haunted dolls in existence. The doll has become a part of Carrie's family, a constant reminder of the mysterious and malevolent forces that can inhabit seemingly innocent objects. There are objects in this world that seem to carry a dark, malevolent presence within them. Items so cursed that they bring fear, tragedy, and death to those who possess them. These aren't just tales to frighten children. They're documented cases that have left a trail of misery and misfortune in their wake. The world of hauntings and cursed objects is a fascinating one to say the least. There's something really unsettling about the idea of an object being possessed or manipulated by an unknown force. These objects challenge our understanding of reality, making us question the very nature of evil and how it can manifest in the physical world. Haunted and cursed objects like Letta hold a unique place in our understanding of the supernatural. These items are more than just curiosities. They are physical manifestations of fear, tragedy, and sometimes pure evil. The stories surrounding these objects challenge our perception of reality and force us to confront the possibility that some items are best left undisturbed. Let's dive deeper into the world of cursed possessions with some of the most infamous and terrifying stories ever recorded. Throughout history, cursed objects have been linked to misfortune and death. From ancient relics to everyday items, these objects are often believed to be imbued with a negative energy or a vengeful spirit. What makes these stories particularly fascinating is the tangible evidence. Recorded events, witness testimonies, and physical symptoms experienced by those who come into contact with them. Some experts suggest that the belief in cursed objects is a way for people to make sense of the inexplicable. Others argue that these objects genuinely carry a negative energy that can affect the living. In the heart of Key West, Florida, resides a doll so infamous, its legend has crossed oceans and generations. This is the story of Robert the Doll. Robert the Doll is a seemingly innocent antique doll, a mere toy by just taking a look at him. But the story of Robert is much deeper than we might think. 
The doll was given to a young boy named Robert Eugene Otto by a Bahamian servant in the early 1900s. The doll, with its lifelike features and sailor suit, quickly became Jean's closest companion. He named it Robert after himself and the two became inseparable. But what seemed like an innocent friendship soon took a dark and sinister turn. Soon after Robert the doll arrived, strange occurrences began to plague the Otto household. It started with eerie giggles in the middle of the night and objects mysteriously moving around the house. Jean's parents would often hear him talking to the doll in his room, with a deep, unsettling voice responding back. Objects would move on their own, and Eugene's other toys were found mutilated. Jean's parents would often wake up to hear their son screaming in the middle of the night, only to find furniture overturned, and Jean in bed, terrified, with Robert at his side. Jean insisted every time. Robert did it. Visitors reported seeing Robert's expression change and even witnessed him moving from window to window. As Jean grew older, his attachment to Robert remained. He even gave the doll a special room in the attic of his home when he moved back in as an adult. The strange occurrences continued, with visitors claiming the doll's expression would change and they could hear footsteps coming from the attic. He insisted that Robert the doll was responsible for the bizarre events that plagued their home. Despite these frightening experiences, Eugene held onto the doll throughout his life. After his death in 1974, the new owners of the auto home continued to experience unsettling events. The new owners reported the same disturbing phenomena, leading them to donate Robert to the Fort East Martello Museum in Key West. After being donated to the museum, Robert's legend only grew. Visitors often experienced malfunctions with their cameras and other electronic devices. Some claim to feel an overwhelming sense of dread in Robert's presence. It's said that to avoid Robert's wrath, you must ask his permission before taking a photo and thank him afterward. Those who don't often report accidents, illnesses, and other misfortunes shortly after their visit. So if you ever visit Robert the doll, remember to be polite. Or else, you might find yourself on the receiving end of his curse. Next, we venture into the dark history of the debug box, a small wine cabinet said to house a restless spirit. The debug box gained notoriety when it was listed on eBay by Kevin Manis in 2003. Manis claimed to have purchased the box at an estate sale of a Holocaust survivor from Poland. Instead, the box were two locks of hair, a dried rosebud, a goblet, two wheat pennies, a candlestick, and a granite statue. Unbeknownst to him, the box contained a dibuk. In Jewish folklore, a dibuk is a disembodied human spirit that because of his former sins wanders restlessly until he finds haven in the body of a living person. Many and subsequent owners reported horrific nightmares, the smell of cat urine and health issues. Menace's mother suffered a stroke the same day he gave her the box. Another owner, Jason Haxton, experienced coughing up blood and welts appearing on his body. Haxton, a museum curator, decided to study the box and its contents. However, his health began to deteriorate rapidly. He suffered from strange illnesses including hives, coughing of blood, and even partial paralysis. Haxton also experienced a series of vivid and terrifying nightmares about a demonic hag. Despite his best efforts to cleanse the box, the disturbances persisted. Other individuals who came into contact with the debug box reported similar experiences. A student who borrowed the box for a college project began experiencing severe insomnia and night terrors. A friend who handled the box felt an intense, burning sensation in his eyes and later developed vision problems. Desperate to end the torment, Hexton consulted with rabbis and other spiritual leaders. He eventually sealed the box and buried it in his backyard. Haxton believes the box should never be opened again, for the debug inside is too dangerous to be released. He later gave the cabinet to Ghost Adventure star Zach Bagans to display in his museum. This is the current location of the box. However, in 2021, Kevin Manis apparently admitted to writer Charles Moss that the box was his own creation. He said, I am a creative writer. The debug box is a story that I created. And the debug box story has done exactly what I intended it to do when I posted it 20 years ago, which was to become an interactive horror story in real time. 
he added new elements to the debug block story over the years to help evolve it, keep it relevant and interesting. Whether you believe in the supernatural or not, the debug box's story is undeniably filled with intrigue and fear. So if you ever come across an old mysterious box, maybe it's best to leave it alone, even if it turns out to be a hoax. For today's final cursed object, we will explore the haunting tale of the Busby Stoop Chair, a piece of furniture that has brought death to those who dare sit in it. The Busby Stoop Chair, also known as the Dead Man's Chair, is linked to the execution of Thomas Busby in 1702. Busby was a notorious criminal who was sentenced to death for murdering his father-in-law, Daniel Audi. Audi and Busby were running a coin counterfeiting business, and they argued about the business, which ended with Busby killing Audi. On his way to the gallows, Busby asked to have a final drink at his favorite pub, where he cursed the chair he'd been sitting in, declaring that anyone who sat in it would die. Over the centuries, numerous deaths have been attributed to the chair. During World War II, airmen from a nearby base made the pub a frequent stop, and many who sat in the chair never returned from their missions. In the 1970s, a cleaning woman tripped and fell into the chair, dying shortly afterward from a brain tumor. Delivery man, repairman, and even a roofer who merely touched the chair met their untimely deaths. Eventually, the pub owner moved the chair to the cellar, but after more accidents, it was finally donated to the Thirst Museum, where it now hangs on the wall to prevent anyone from sitting in it again. So if you ever find yourself in Thirst and see the Busby's tube chair, remember its dark history and the many lives it has claimed. It's a chilling reminder that some items are best left undisturbed. Thank you for joining me on this chilling journey through the world of cursed objects. These stories remind us that some items carry with them more than just physical weight. They bear the burdens of tragedy, fear, and malevolence. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing so you won't miss any future uploads. Also liking the video is very much appreciated. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.